The soundness of one hand typing. That is the theme for this year's LangJam. I decided to make a programming language specifically designed for right-handed people. I call it UEOP. UEOP is designed for right-handed programmers, but it can also be used by programmers who have spilled Coca-Cola on their keyboard. Let's look at how to install the UEOP compiler. Let's go to the UEOP homepage. UEOP.inc. Here's the UEOP homepage. There's a sample Hello World program. Well, I mean, there's no E key, so uh, just hello. Uh, so let's look at these install instructions. So just to demonstrate and give you a feel for what it's like being right-handed, uh, let's type this out. So uh, I'm on Linux right now. U P U L space UEOP, easy to type. Inl P U H. Oops, did I type it wrong? I typed it wrong. I have the camera in my face. Um, oops, I forgot a question mark. Luckily, we have access to arrow keys. Okay, welcome to the UAOP installer. It will be installed to there. Yeah, let's install it. Successfully installed. Enter this. Enter the installation with this. So now we need this step because we can't CD into the folder because we don't have access to the C or D keys. So it says try these example programs. So let's try the Hello World to make sure everything's working. Uh, you can see I've already run it, but hey, it works. Nice. So let's wait, wait, we've already seen Hello World. It's on the home page. So let's look at the cat program. So the cat program is called put. Wait a minute. I can't type T. Uh oh. Well, I guess we uh, I kind of cheated on that one. <laughs> let's look at the echo program called ho. Uh, so we can say hi you, and this is hi you back. So let's look at the code for that. So um, unfortunately, I can't open Vim. So let's open VS Code. So that's in you uh, Okay, let's look at the Ho program. VS Code. There you go. So, uh, UEOP is a C style language, so you have curly brackets. Um, so, this is the main function. Of course, we can't type I or A, so we're stuck with min. NOP is like void in C, it indicates no, uh, the main doesn't return anything. So, here I'm making an integer variable. Uh, we're storing one in it. Nine minus eight is one. Uh, go away. The uh, da, 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 da. it's an integer because capital I stands for integer. This integer type and I lowercase is our variable name. So you can see we're using our variable name here and here. Uh, so we set I to one, then we enter a loop. Here we make a yo-yo variable. A yo-yo is like string in other languages. And uh, we take the user input. The user input in this case is what they typed on the command line. So U, UI of one would be in this case, high. So we get the high. Now we need to check if there's no command, uh, command line option there. So if we get no yo-yo back, we exit the loop. We exit this loop. Um, but if we do have an option, we print it with the p, p yo yo command. Then we print a character, which is just the space between each option. And then we go to the next option and then we loop. So that's the echo command. And at the end, it prints a new line. 
Um, so that's a simple program. We can look at complicated program, which is a brain interpreter that I wrote. Um, you can see, so on is how you do conditional statements, as you may have guessed, it's kind of like if. So we can check if it's plus or if it's minus or less than whatever. Um, here's the handling for loops. So at the in our main whoop, in our main we read the command line option, the first command line option, which should be the file name. And if it's not provided, we use a default program here. Ah. Um, but if they did provide an option, so one issue is that we don't have a not equals operator. So instead of using not equals, you have to do an equals and then compare that with zero. Uh, but so if they did not provide nothing, which means if they provided something, then uh, we have to, that's a file name. So we have to load it. That's what low yo yo is for. It loads a file into a string. And then we allocate memory for our, uh, our brain interpreter. Uh, based on the limit, which I think is 9999 or something, yeah, 9999, you know, cells in the brain interpreter. And then we execute our program. Um, I'm not going to go through every line of the interpreter, but it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward brain interpreter. So I don't have any brain programs because I could download any because I only have a right hand. But uh, I guess if if I extend this language to support networking, then we can write a right-handed thing to download arbitrary brain programs and whatever. Maybe we can write a web browser in uh, UEOP. But until then, we have to, uh, I guess, well, we could write our own brain program. I'm, I'm lazy. Anyway, we can run the interpreter. And as I said, there was a default program. So the default program, what was the interpreter called? Default program just runs and the default program's job is to print out this usage information. So this is much easier to type in brain than it is to type in, um, in UEOP because it contains weird letters we don't know how to type, but whatever. So what are the pros and cons of UEOP? As you can tell, I've only been using my right hand for this entire exercise. I've only been using the right side of the keyboard. I don't have to reach over and uh, risk RSI or something by reaching over the left side of the keyboard. Um, it might be good for dyslexic people that can't tell between Q and P, for example, because there is no Q, there's only P. Much, much easier for dyslexics. But what are some disadvantages? Well, one issue is it doesn't work on Windows, which is a little ironic because I'm wearing a Windows t-shirt. Another issue is that uh, you can't copy paste code from Stack Overflow because Control C, Control V doesn't work. Um, that's quite unfortunate. It might be a good idea to make a UEOP OS that supports more ergonomic shortcuts for right-handed users. So that's all I have to say about UEOP. Thanks for watching.